Nexus Blitz is back for the first time since 2021. One of the core features of this game mode was the ability to use old, difficult to balance items that never found a place on Summoner's Rift. Unfortunately, these items don't appear on the recommended tab of the item shop, so many players who have never played Nexus Blitz before might not even know these items exist. Here's a quick rundown of all the exclusive items in Nexus Blitz and how to use them effectively. The Golden Spatula is the most powerful item in the game, and that's obvious just looking at its stats. But its greatest strength is not so obvious. In Nexus Blitz, champions that have gotten several kills or assists without dying are given a special buff. They become on fire, which burns nearby enemies, recovers 10 mana or energy per second, and reduces your basic ability's cooldowns by 50%. Unfortunately, it also increases all damage taken by 25 or 35% for melee or ranged champions, and decreases all healing and shielding by 25%. It also places a bounty on your head, giving your killer 800 gold and 200 gold to every other player on the enemy team. After you die, the on-fire buff is lost. When you buy the golden spatula, you gain the on-fire buff permanently. It doesn't give a shutdown when you die, but the other penalties are still there. This means tanks do not want to buy the golden spatula, as all of their defensive stats will be cut down by 25%. If your champion or team comp relies on healing and shielding to function, you also would not want to buy the Golden Spatula. However, this is not the only drawback of the item. This item has the same cost as about two and a half items. All that gold has to be contained in components, not completed items. And with boots taking up one slot, you can only buy five out of the seven total components that make up the spatula, leaving you with a very large combined cost. This becomes even worse if you build other items first. In order to make use of the Golden Spatula, you need a champ that has defensive abilities like Invisibility, Invulnerability, or Stealth instead of relying on defensive stats, healing, or shielding to fight. They need to make decent use of the three main stats, Attack Damage, Ability Power, and Attack Speed. They also need to function in the early game off of the components alone without building another item first. Kale, Shaco, Akali, and Katarina are some of the best users of this item. Pair with full offensive items. Atma's Reckoning returns, but it is very different in Nexus Splits than it was in Arena. Arena's version was built specifically for that game mode, while Atma's Reckoning was originally released as a Nexus Splits exclusive item back in 2018. Back then, it did not have any health or critical strike chance in the item stats, or its passive. Instead, it gave AD, resistances, and bonus AD based on your maximum health. This bonus stacked over time in combat, similar to Jack Show today. This item has almost the same function as Titanic Hydra's Colossus passive, and it should be used in a similar way. You want as much health as possible from other items in order to gain bonus AD from Atmas. But there is one key difference. Titanic only scales off of bonus health, while Atmas scales off of total max health. This means you will always get more AD from Atmas, but only after 5 seconds in combat. It also has a higher ratio, 2.5% max health instead of 2% bonus health. You can reach incredible AD levels with this one item. However, the item has a clear weakness. Its base stats are incredibly gold and efficient, so at one item, if you are not in combat, you are not getting much for your 3000 gold. Once you have a few items, the main difference between them is that the item has no cleave effect or on-hit damage. You don't need to be an auto-based champion to make good use of it. All that matters is your durability, how long you can stay in combat at max stacks. This item is incredibly strong on champions that value defensive stats, but also have very high AD scaling. Pair with health and effects that scale off of max health, like Steric's Gage and Gargoyle Stoneplate. Deathfire Grasp has been the most powerful AP item in the game in years past, and it is back relatively unchanged in Nexus Blitz. With ridiculous stats and an unbelievably powerful active, this is the strongest possible item for burst mages, or any mage for that matter. It's a simple item, just point and click on a target and they will explode from the instant 15% max health magic damage and the 15% damage amplification from all sources. You no longer need Rabidons to outscale tanks, just make sure you can get through their resistances. Ingenious Hunter can be very useful for getting the active off more. Pair with Leandries to amplify the max health magic damage, 
or build full penetration to delete squishies. X-Tech Gunblade is a classic item that was only removed from the game relatively recently. It follows the same concept of Rage Blade in enabling both AD and AP builds. The active is a range slow that does decent damage, but it isn't the main strength of the item. Gunblade has 15% Omnivamp, which is the most out of any item. Thanks to that, you have damage, survivability, and utility all in one item. To use Gunblade well, you need great AD and AP ratios, and damage through abilities. If you have any skill shots, the active can be very useful as it has a low enough cooldown to be used in every teamfight to guarantee your combo. This item works better with AP builds than AD builds since the active scales off of AP, so you will usually want full AP with some resistances to make better use of the healing. Innervating Locket is Catalyst on Steroids. Not only do you get the standard health recovery from ability casts and the mana regen from damage taken, but you also get 3% max health and mana recovered from every single ability cast. This effect is incredibly powerful in poke lanes and for combat sustain. However, the other main component of Locket is Caulfield's Warhammer. This is an AD item, which severely limits innervating Locket's potential users, but makes it an effective alternative to Rod of Ages and unlocks catalysts for several mana-hungry AD champions. Due to the strength of the health and mana recovery, this item is also very effective on most tanks, especially if they have some sort of AD ratio in their kit. Instead of building Sunfire, tanks can use abilities and autos to win trades. Building an AD item makes them more of a split push threat, and allows them to win duels, which is essential for the random events that occur in the early game. Pair Innovating Locket with Resistances, Shields, and Ability Haste to make sure you can survive everything. Sword of the Divine is the perfect snowballing tool. It is incredibly cheap at 2,500 gold, has a great build path, and allows you to win almost any duel you take every 90 seconds. You get 100% crit and attack speed for 3 auto attacks, so you don't want to build crit afterwards or you just reduce the impact of the active. Instead, build for an alternate playstyle. A great example is Shaco building Lethality and Crit with Sword, and then going AP for the later stages of the game. With Sword, you can win duels and get the benefit of teamfighting builds that have splash damage or utility. Use on any AD champ with split playstyles, and pair with anything except Crit. Spectral Cutlass was originally created as an ARAM exclusive during Pike's release event, Curse of the Drowned. It has a ton of attack damage and an amazing build path for assassins, consisting of a serrated dirk and the lifeline component unique to this item, which includes a stopwatch. The stats are amazing, but the real selling point is the soul anchor active. On activation, you create an anchor that you will blink to after 4 seconds. You can get this full effect for 1650 gold. This allows you to play like Yone, you can use all your abilities to go forwards and find kills, and then safely return no matter how deep you went. However, you do not have control over when you go back. If you are not able to kill all the threats or find some way to survive for those 4 seconds, you will die. If you choose to buy this item, you need to know your limits exactly, both how much you can do before dying and exactly how long you have before snapping back to your anchor. This item is almost 100% gold efficient from the stats alone, so it is absolutely worth buying but the main strength and drawback is the difficulty of using the active. It will be used best by assassins with movement abilities that can get far away from the anchor, ensuring that the anchor will be safe to return to. Pair with the usual mix of survivability and damage so that even if you can't kill everyone, you can still survive just long enough to snap back to your anchor. Ghost crawlers were also made for Pike's release and became fairly popular in Arena. They allow you to walk through walls for 6 seconds, and give you bonus move speed while inside walls. You are visible, targetable, and free to cast abilities or auto attack, but that will end the effect early. It can be triggered while in combat, and being in a wall near an enemy champion, minion, or turret will give the enemy team vision of you. While you are in a wall, you do not gain vision of anything that is outside the wall, so enemies can see and hit you, but if you don't have another source of vision outside the wall, you will not be able to see anything. This active is best used in combat. It's difficult to use it to sneak up on enemies, so its main use is chasing or escaping through a wall. 
While there aren't that many large walls and nexus splits, ghost crawlers are still very useful for champions that have no other ways to get over walls. Nexus Blitz has not been the most popular game mode in the past, and I don't expect it to match Arena's success, but this iteration of Nexus Blitz should be far better than the previous ones. Major changes have been made to the way events spawn, as well as changes to the Jungle Guardian. All the items have had slight tweaks to match the strength of items since Mythics have been added. Event spawn location was the most frustrating part of Nexus Blitz for a long time, so they have been changed to spawn at a neutral location or to favor the losing team if they are very far behind. However, this still did not fix events spawning near turrets. An event can be on a relatively even location, but if it's too close to a tower, one team gains a massive advantage over the other, especially in the early game. The Jungle Guardian has been changed to have more health in the early game and less health in the late game. This is so that players can't invade at level 3 with increased smite damage. Last time Nexus Splits was live, Smite did 450 damage, and now it does 600, so the health increase makes sure you are still safe in your jungle. In the late game, the Jungle Guardian was a big problem for events. If an event spawned in the jungle, one team had a massive advantage. The Guardian could be killed, but it took a lot of time, which is a problem because the Guardian gains bonus AD over time in combat. By reducing the health in the late game, a winning team can still win an event that spawns in the enemy jungle without taking too much damage from the Guardian. With these changes, Nexus Blitz is a much more enjoyable game mode than it used to be. Please try out the mode if you haven't already, even if you have played it before. It still needs work, but considering the changes that have already been made and the champion balance adjustments being reset, it's likely that the game modes team will continue to work on it, and hopefully we will see Nexus Blitz a bit more than we have in the past.